Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel of Grid with Laszlo and Renewable Energy. This video is a follow-up to my last video I posted about the Solar 12K inverter a few days ago. I will have the link in the description if you would like to see that as well. What I was trying to say, this Solar 12K was not designed the way that can deliver the power listed on the spec sheet. That is the reason I had to remove it from my system after two years. The purpose for this video to provide more information so there is a better understanding how I got there. Please allow me a moment to show you my settings first before we go any further. On the top we can see the battery storage in Mpower, but the most important setting is the charge and discharge current is to set 185 amps. So now, let me illustrate with live situations that clearly shows the solar is not overloaded in any way according to spec sheet, but it shuts down with AC overload fault. So after turning the inverter on, we have a very small load that is coming from the lights I am using in the house. The first example is we keep this small load and turn on a large 6000 watt heater. As we can see, the load are almost perfectly balanced on lane 1 and lane 2. Now I will turn on a heat gun on low setting and increase the load on lane 2 with approximately 600 watt. The total energy consumption at this point is between 7.6-7.7 kW and solar is doing fine. In the next example, I'm going to keep the lights as a very small load. I'm also going to keep the 6000 watt heater as a large load. And I will turn on a 140 watt small load on lane 2 and increase these loads with a heat gun on low setting so the total consumption is between 7.8 and 7.9 kilo. Solar is still doing okay. My third example is when I keep both small and large loads turned on the same way as in my previous example. The only difference I'm going to do that instead of using the heat gun on low setting, I am going to use a hair dryer on low setting. Let's see what happens. As we can see, solar did shut down at total consumption of 8.1 kW or between 8,800 watts. So let's stop here for a second and check it out if this is normal or if this is how it's supposed to be. On the left, I represent the information where Solark did shut down and on the right the spec sheet for Solark. According to spec sheet the max battery charge discharge current is 185 amps and that's where my setting is at. In our example this number is 154.42 amps. Moving down on the list Max continuous inverter power is 9000 watts lane to lane and 4800 watts lane to neutral. In our example, lane to lane the total consumption is 8068 watts, lane 1 to neutral 3206, lane 2 to neutral 4154 watts. So this inverter shuts down 12 to 20% sooner with AC overload fault than rated in spec sheets. 
In my opinion, on the market every item should be able to deliver the power that is rated for, regardless if this is an inverter, a battery or a car. We all know there are hundreds of companies just print out a sticker and attach it to the side of the product so it looks good on a paper, but at least from reputable companies like Solar, consumers should get more. The ultimate goal for Solark should be to make the product more powerful than it is on the spec sheet, so the unit is not going to die within a year if customers using them close to the limits on a daily basis, not setting up limits 15 to 20 percent less than the spec sheet limits so they can give you the full 10 year warranty. To be honest guys, I am very disappointed with this unit. Just think about it, if this inverter would able to deliver what is rated for, I could use my mini sprint, the lights and the dryer at the same time. Or I could run the dishwasher, toaster and the mini split with all the lights at the same time. Or I could use the stove or the oven at the same time. But I can't because I have approximately 1000 watt less power. If you save money to buy something nice and more expensive, that hurts as well. Based on the evidence, I ask you as audience, is there is something I'm missing here? If you have the same inverter, did you experience unusual shutdown? Would you feel the way you paid more for something that you should have? Should Solark make a recall on these items or replace it? At the end of the day, you can have the nicest thing for sale, but without consumers, the product just going to sit in a warehouse for long, long, long time. I know there are other things I could do, like move my heavy loads to propane, or buy another one like this and connect them in parallel. I personally harness all the energy for my needs on site and I like to keep it that way. And absolutely not worth to buy one more like this when other manufacturers able to make more powerful units with the same warranty for cheaper price. However, I'm going to contact Solark after 2 years because they know about this problem and they can replace it with a 15k even if I have to pay the difference. I will let you know later what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.